Hi everyone, my name is Luke, I'm one of the systems engineers here at Veeam Software in Australia and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your S3 storage gateway so that Veeam can archive your backups off to the S3 storage and um, keep those retention policies going whether it's um, you know your weeklies, your monthlies, your yearlies but your grandfather, father, son retention policy and get that moving off to S3 storage so you, you actually just leave those files that you hardly ever access until you desperately need them so they're on that cheap piece of storage which which you know only costs when you actually re have to retrieve that file storage back so we're going to go through a few things um, start with the storage gateway it's pretty straightforward um, and we'll go through step by step and show you how to do that so we're going to set up and activate um, a gateway cached volume now uh, we're going to talk about uh, the differences between all these and I'm going to be setting um, various videos up for uh, virtual tape library and stored volumes as well so for today we're going to do gateway cache volumes and this is basically so we have virtually a large disk um, uh, appearing on our uh, backup server as a repository but in actual fact we're only taking up a small portion of our infrastructure storage to do this and that that disk is actually exposed up on the S3 storage so when we want to access this we've got ways that we can do that by creating snapshots and we're going to go into that in just a bit so we've got an ESX host that we're going to deploy this to I'm going to just click through those I've already got the software so I'm just going to come into my virtual center now and import the OVF image and there it is already um, we're going to call this AWS cache S3 we're going to stick that in the AWS service folder it's going to deploy in that particular ESX host under servers and we're going to put it on this piece of storage with plenty of space this needs to be thick provision lazy zero and we're not going to power that on, there's just a couple of points that we need to do and I will speed through this section now okay so that's completed first thing we do we need to edit the settings on this and go to options go to VMware tools synchronize the guest time with the host that's the first thing next we have to come in and create another disk this first disk we're going to create is for the buffer okay and I'm just I'm not going to do it with any massive amounts of storage there's some um, great tools on the AWS website that you can scale your tools depending on your links and network and all that kind of stuff we're only going to be putting small backup files as, a, as an example on this so we're going to put 150 gig as my buffer and then we click finish and we just need to come and change the SCSI type to VMware para virtualized I'm also going to add another disk and we'll do that in just a second now if we come back to the wizard here we've done that part We've synchronized the clock. We've used parallelized virtual controllers. Now here we go. I put my 150 gig, and we're leaving this as blank because it's a backup workloads like backups. So recommended storage for caching data is 165 gig. All right. So we'll go back in to my virtual center, and we're going to add that 165 gig disk. next thing we do is we power on the virtual machine once it's ready okay we'll wait for that to power on and we need to pick up the IP address of that
Okay, so there's my IP address, 172.20.13.62. So, we can pass this, 172.20.13.62, just double check that. And we're going to go and proceed to activation of our storage gateway. We're going to check for the time zones here. It's 10 for Australia. Gateway name. and activate my storage gateway. Okay, so there's my gateway activated. Now we're going to come in and create a volume. So we need to tell this, this is the 150 gig for my upload buffer and the 165 gigs for my cache storage. So this is going to be my more recently used data. So anything I need to get hold of quickly. We're going to skip these uh, monitors, very useful. Now this is where we set our actual capacity. So 165 gig is going to be for my more recently used data and as it pushes past that it's going to move the older data up to my one terabyte which I've got up here as my S3 storage. And I'm just going to make this quite obvious. Uh, my volumes S3, AWS S3. Okay, and we create this volume at one terabyte. So it's been created and you can see in here it's, been cr it's creating itself now. So we'll just leave that running. Okay, so that's available now. As I select that, we can actually see the iSCSI target information. So we just really need to know that IP address, which is obviously my local IP address down on the ground there. Now, I'm going to come over to my backup server, and we're going to add that iSCSI disk. So iSCSI initiator, we stick the IP address in, quick connect here, and there you go. There's my piece of storage attached. Okay, that. Now, to here, we'll do a quick refresh on the disks, and we should see my one terabyte disk appear. There it is. Create that as a new volume. Yep. Okay, so that. One terabyte, and we'll sign this to E drive, and call this AWS S3. Okay, that's that done. Now, we've got inside here, we should be able to see my disk has appeared here, and there you go, my AWS S3 storage is, is a one terabyte disk, and obviously we're only still using 165, or a couple of disks of a much smaller size, and that can go up to 32 terabytes, and you can have multiple volumes of that. So, next step is to run a backup copy job to, to there. So, we need to add a new backup repository. And we're going to call this my AWS S3 storage. In fact, we've got a repo. So Windows Server, this server. And we're going to browse to the directory, which is here. Make a new folder, and we'll call this Backup Archives. Enable NFS.
and that's my repository done. So next I want to send a backup copy job to here. Okay, the reason I'm doing this is because I really want to use that S3 storage as my archive, my off-site retention policy. Um, so we'll call this one off-site S3 off-site um, to copy every day and we'll add in a couple of VMs from my backup infrastructure here and I'll add in my exchange server and a domain controller. And the nice thing about this, is even though these three, this backup job contains three VMs, I'm actually only going to start making restore points out of two of them. Okay, so very important to to note that Veeam doesn't just take the backup files and move them off site. Actually, can um, dedicate itself to specific VMs in specific backup jobs. So I could even take that one out of there and that one out of there, and it'll start to create that forward incremental chain off site. Okay, so we've added my couple of VMs here, and I've got. I'm going to reduce this because I'm not too worried about the restore points. But this is the this is the archive stuff. So we're going to have maybe one monthly and a couple of yearlies. In fact, we'll we'll do um, we'll do twelve. So one one per month. One monthly, just to, just as an example there. We change the repository to my S3 repository. Next. Now, I'm not going to be using the WAN accelerator at this point because the S3 storage is going to be doing my transportation of those of those files. So we're going to do a direct copy to that disk. Okay, and we'll follow that to run any time. Enable the job, those VMs up there. Site, there was Now what I did want to show you here is as this job is starting to send that data to that um, to that cache storage, it's actually moving that data up to the buffer as well. And you can see this happening actually is if I come to select my S3 storage and go to my gateway and you can see my upload buff, buff, buffer there is starting to increase. So it's a really good place to actually monitor what's going on on your, on your upload buffer and you'll see that changing all the time. Okay, so you can now see that my upload buffer is now at zero, so that means nothing's been uploaded up to the S3 storage anymore. And looking back at my backup copy job, I actually left this running overnight, so we've got um, a couple of restore points that have happened here, and we can look at that and see that the S3 offsite repository has got a couple of restore points. So it's actually realized that a backup has happened on those particular servers during the night and then picked up the restore point and moved that off to a backup copy job, which has then pushed that off using the S3 storage gateway up to the S3 storage. So what can we do with that? So wanting want to really get that, get a restore of that server back. Um, now, what we can do is create a snapshot and mount the snapshot to an EC2 instance and I'm going to take you through that process right now. So we go to our storage here and select volumes and select that and just create snapshot. Which is really really straightforward. Okay when we come over to snapshots here and we'll just do a quick couple of refreshes here and that should turn up when it's ready. Okay, and there's the snapshots appeared. So we've got one terabyte snapshot. Now, what we do is we come over to my EC2 instance. So look into the EC2 console here, and you'll see I've got um, an instance running up here, and this is actually an RDP session which I've got running as well. Now, what we do is we come down to our snapshot of EBS storage, 
and you'll see there's the AWS console snapshot that I've created. All I need to do is select that and create a volume from it. Okay, we just need to drop this, depending on the iOS we want. Yes, create that. And now we're able to mount this to my EC2 instance. So go to volumes. And you can see this um, volume has appeared. Here, that's the one I just created. Actions now attach the volume. So I need to attach it to my EC2 instance. I've only got one running. And yes, attach. Okay, so pretty straightforward. All I need to do now is select my EC2 instance. And we're going to come into disk management here. And you can see that this server has now picked up this particular disk. Right, so if I just go to here, uh, we should see, there you go, there's my backup archives, my S3 offsite storage, and you can see here I've got um, a Veeam backup file and a Veeam uh, and a VIB file, which is a Veeam incremental backup. So a couple of restore points there, really straightforward. So what I've done with the EC2 instance is I've actually installed Veeam backup and replication on there. I'm going to show you how we can do some restores from that. And um, just imagine this archive's got your seven-year retention. You need to drag some documentation back from there, some emails, etc. You're going to be able to do all this sort of stuff. Close those windows, and there we go. I've got Veeam empty backup and replication there. And what I'm going to do is just go to repositories, and I'm going to add a new repository, which is going to be my S3 offsite or archive, should I call that? Microsoft Windows Server. Next, browse to that particular directory. Next, we don't need a vPower NFS on that. And we'll import these. And this is really, really fast. Done. Now we can go back to my backup and replication, and we can see that that's been imported. And there we go. Look, I've got my domain controller and I've got an exchange server as well. So let's do a recovery. Now, what I've done actually is I've got a VPN connected to my. Um, on-premises here so these two these servers can talk and I can actually from this EC2 instance ping my exchange server and there you go so that means we can do start doing some recovery so what I'm going to do is just um, split these screens up so you can see what's going on and we'll go to my on-prem here close that and we're going to open up Internet Explorer. Okay, here we go. So, APAC Lab. And here we go. We've got some emails from 2013. I often use these as an example. Delete those. Empty from the recycle bin, and then we come over here and we see Microsoft Exchange items. So I'm going to do a restore of that, and there's my two restore points, like we said before. We'll come back to the most recent and mount that Exchange server, EDB database. Okay, so there's my database, and um, we can browse through there, and I can see my inbox there, and, and there we go. We can see the emails from 2013. 2013 there, so I select all of those, and we'll do a restore directly back to the mailbox. OK, 
Okay. Restore to the original folder. And there you go, emails directly from an archive using S3 storage mounted up to an EC2 instance with an on-prem VPN straight back into my Exchange server and straight back into the user's mailbox. All right, well, that's the end of the demo for today. I uh, really appreciate you watching and look out for some more S3 Storage Gateway and Amazon presentation um, demos and, uh, on my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining and see you next time. Bye.